Tonight on KGW News, 48 hours after a historic snowstorm. Oh my gosh. Slick spots continue to throw off drivers, while some are still stuck in their neighborhoods. And I would just like to move this 100 to 150 yards. Even emergency crews are struggling. Yeah, it's just a lot more obstacles in the way to get the job done. We take a look at the progress to clear the roads. Plus, it was just craziness. Meet the high school wrestlers who use their strength to get others through the storm. The guy's raised, if someone needs help, you help them. Your news starts now. Risky roads remain as our near record snowfall refreezes. KGW's Drive 8 was behind that car on I-84 this morning as it spun out on the ice. With temperatures dropping again, you're going to want to be careful tomorrow as well if you venture out. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Brittany Falkers, and let's first head to meteorologist Matt Zafino. Matt, we're also looking at another round of snow coming this weekend. Yeah, snow is in the forecast in one shape or another for, for several days, really. It's really quite remarkable for the end of February and going into March. Outside right now, we've got a clear sky. We're down to 29 in Portland, and the east winds have really backed off. Only seven miles an hour out of the airport right now. And that's one reason why it's going to be colder tonight than it was last night. Already down to 21 in Hillsborough, 22 in Vancouver. So teens easily will be had across the metro area tomorrow morning as it remains generally clear. It's 9 degrees in Pendleton right now. But the clouds are going to begin to roll in tomorrow as this weather system approaches. We're already seeing some scattered high clouds right now, but nothing major until during the day when this system blows on in. It is going to bring us snow, but this is a different animal compared to what happened on Wednesday. And in a way, it's an even more complex forecast and certainly tricky when it comes to snow. That said, there's a winter storm watch up for the Portland and Vancouver areas, notice, notably not for the mid or southern Willamette Valley, as this time we'll pick up a south wind. Should warm us up enough to get the snow level up to 500 feet or so after an initial area of snow Saturday night. By Sunday morning, it should be raining the valleys. But for Portland, the cold air hangs on a little bit longer. And so we may see several inches of snow, especially to the north and east of, say, downtown Portland. So very cold overnight tonight in the teens. Record lows once again. Tomorrow, we will see snow develop in the Portland area. Anywhere from one to six inches in some places may get one and other places may get six, like the wide variety of snowfall we had on Wednesday. And then we may get snow again on Monday morning. Brittany, we'll talk about all of this with more detail. Later, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Matt. Well, you know, depending on where you were in Portland today, roads were either much better or practically the same as they were yesterday. This two days after record snowfall. Alma McCarty joins us live now from Drive 8 with a look at current conditions and the challenges that the snow and ice are posing for emergency crews. Alma. Yeah, Brittany, I just like to start out these live shots by saying we are out on these roads, so you do not have to be in our decked out vehicle drive eight here. I'm going to flip around the camera, show you what the current conditions are in southwest Portland. We are heading towards the West Hills here. We are clearly on a neighborhood road. It's a lot more slick than some of the main roads that we have seen. You have a lot more ice, a lot of refreezing, you can tell. Priority number one for agencies since Wednesday, like ODOT, PBOT, was clearing roads for emergency crews, but they are still feeling the effects of the cold, of the ice, and of the snow. No matter the conditions, be it sun or rain or now snow and ice, when first responders get the call, it's all hands on deck. It's just a lot more obstacles in the way to get the job done. In Southeast Portland Friday, firefighters battled flames on the second floor of a home. Portland Fire and Rescue reports extinguishing the entire fire, clearing the house of smoke and making sure no one was inside took nearly 30 minutes. Battalion Chief TJ Leonards explains fighting fires in this weather makes things a bit tricky from the station to the scene. It's a lot more difficult getting here. As soon as you get tapped out coming out of the bay, the streets with everybody has seen is what you have to deal with. All the rigs are chained up. And the further out you get, all the additional support rigs are delayed by quite a bit. You can have potential water problems if things are frozen up. The traction and footing for firefighters, deploying hose lines into the facility, you know, you have a, 
higher chance of injuring our members. Luckily, Leonard says his team had no issues today. But in other parts of Portland, emergency crews did have some problems. An ODOT incident responder was injured while helping out on I-205 near Northeast Airport Way. Officials reporting a van driver hit ice on the freeway shoulder and rear-ended the vehicle, despite the flashing lights. Abandoned vehicles and drivers struggling to navigate the slick roads across the metro area continue to be a concern. A large portion of our coverage does include hills, which uh, leads to um, people just leaving their cars. Um, those do uh, get in the way, obviously, of our response. Sam Q with TVFNR says the goal of his and every agency is to get to each scene safely, reiterating what many in Portland have heard before. Travel only if necessary and try to stay indoors. Uh, temperatures are going to drop again overnight, which will lead to another refreezing of the melted snow. All right, back on the roads, every agency that I have spoken with has emphasized the importance of being careful in these harsh conditions, slowing down, moving over for emergency vehicles, or just plain staying off the roads altogether. And with more snow on the way, now is going to be the best time to make sure that you have emergency supplies in your car. So you don't need, you don't end up needing rescue. Brittany? Yeah, that's such a good point. We got caught a little off guard this time. Not again. Thanks so much, Alma. We want to get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. TriMet has recovered the last bus that became stuck during Wednesday's storm. At the peak, 150 buses were stranded. Since then, TriMet said all their buses have been fitted with chains. Max service has also been running smoothly with minimal delays. TriMet says they'll decide tomorrow morning if higher elevation bus routes will be canceled. So be sure to check TriMet.org slash alerts for the latest on your route. The Lloyd Center has joined six warming shelters as we enter a fourth night of severe weather. Both Portland and Multnomah County are under a state of emergency through Sunday. Shelters will stay open during the day and night on Friday through at least Saturday morning. But Mayor Ted Wheeler is prepared to extend it further if the need is there. Shelters are also in need of volunteers as many reach full capacity. We had one of our busiest days ever for transports uh, last night. I think it was it was several hundred people that we uh, ended up transporting. So we're moving people and we're getting them to shelters and the shelters are still open. Officials have a meeting with the state on Friday to ask for more resources and personnel help. And a chilly rescue on the Willamette River. Take a look at this. Portland police helped out a husky that ended up in the water. This was by the Oregon Yacht Club in southeast Portland. A Portland officer pulled him out from under a dock. Portland police tweeted that the dog named Oreo is OK tonight thanks to his very thick fur. He's now back home with his owner. Happy ending. Drivers in some hilly neighborhoods around the area have still been unable to leave their homes. We visited the Miramonte Lodge Apartments by Southeast McLaughlin in Milwaukee tonight. A resident there tells us a pile of stranded cars is blocking the steep road out. He took video of one driver just struggling to get up the hill. We have some neighbors that are getting proactive, dumping salt and kitty litter and whatnot around the area, but um, even that isn't uh, thwarting the ice so far. And I would just like to move this 100 to 150 yards just to be able to reach McLaughlin Boulevard so that I can just traverse the city. Oh, it sounds so frustrating. That resident said police couldn't help much since the complex is privately owned. We did reach out to the property owners, but so far haven't heard back. And when it comes to clearing the roads, we've heard a lot of criticism of ODOT and PBOT over the last few days. But how does Washington compare? We've heard drivers over the years say that Washington does a better job responding to big storms. Well, for Oregon, we do know this week's snowfall along the I-5 corridor was especially bad on the Portland side. There was less snow to contend with on the freeway in Vancouver than on the other side of the river. We got both ODOT and WSDOT's take on this first. But first, let's hear from ODOT. Clark County is mostly flat and straight. 
uh, in Portland and the Portland area, we have a much more complicated system with a lot of bridges, a lot of flyover ramps, and a lot more interstate highways that we have to deal with. I think we just had it a little bit easier. Snow levels were different, elevation levels are different, geography is different. Um, so Washington to Oregon is really an apples to oranges comparison. The difference is dramatic. You hit Washington and the roads are more maintained. It's like they, they're taking care of it early in the morning. Whereas Oregon, when I was on the road, it was not like that. It was very dangerous, icy, lots of backups. That last person there was a commuter who spent seven and a half hours on Wednesday going from work in Beaverton to her home in Washington. That said, both agencies are taking whatever winter weather comes this weekend very seriously.